Hey guys, Chris from Adaptivation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 3 from the May 2010 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so we have a nice little opening paragraph here. It says Kalel, the owner of Kalel's gardening center, kept only single entries of his transactions. That means he doesn't use double entry, which could be a bit a bit tricky when you're trying to prepare your final accounts and work out balances and these things, right? On Jan 31st, 2010, he provided his bank manager with the following information, but couldn't answer some questions. Okay, so we have a nice little table here with some opening and closing balances. So the opening balances are on February 1st, 2009. The closing balance is the Jan 31st, 2010 column. Now, a lot of students often have trouble understanding how can a year start on February 1st? That don't make any sense, right? A calendar year goes from January 1st to December 31st. But a business year or a financial year or a reporting period could start at any point in time during the year, usually on the first of any month, and end one year later. So if you start February 1st and you go 365 days, you're going to end up at Jan 31st, right? One day before Feb 1st, 2010. Similarly, if you start, let's say, on April 1st, 2000, and let's say 10, Right, one year later is, is March 31st, 2011. Right, just go back, let's go one year forward, one day back, one year forward, one day back. Okay, anyhow, right, so what do we have? We have property at cost, motor van, value at year end, so that's net book value, inventory, accounts receivable or debtors, accounts payable or creditors, cash, prepaid water rates, and electricity owing. So we have opening and closing balances for all of those things. Now, the first thing they want us to do is to prepare a statement of affairs as at February 1st, 2009 to convert Kalel's Gardening Center's single entry records. What? Okay, so they want a statement of affairs. Basically, that's like a very summarized balance sheet with the point of it being a calculation of capital, a showing or display of assets and liabilities and the difference showing the capital. Okay, so be sure to head up your statements properly. Kalel's Gardening Center, statement of affairs as at 1 February, 2009. Now, there's no particular order in which you have to list these items, but I like to go with assets first and in order of permanence, right? Sometimes you could go in order of appearance. It doesn't really matter. It's not a balance sheet. So there's no, there are no guidelines necessarily, or no, no standards to follow, all right? No hard and fast rules. So we'll start with just order of appearance. A property at cost and motor van value, at, well, at year end, I guess you could say. So those are the only two non-current assets. Now, we don't have to label them as non-current assets. We're just listing them, right? Then we have inventory and account receivable, 4,014.75. So we're going to put those in as well. And we also have cash and the prepaid water rates, prepaid expenses, uh, assets, current assets. So we're going to put the prepaid expenses first and the cash. And we're going to put a subtotal for the assets. Now the liabilities, I think we only have two. We have the accounts payable or creditors, 925. And we have electricity owing. That's like an accrued expense, which is a current liability. So we have just those two items, so a subtotal of 1135. When we subtract that from the assets, we're going to get capital of 54,980. Okay, let's take a look at some more information from this question. Okay, so the question goes on to say that Kalel also provided the following information. First item up, all sales were made on credit. Debtors paid 32,600 by check during the year. The account of one debtor for $75 had been written off as bad, okay? Next, we have all purchases totaling 17455 were made on credit. Third item, a little long here, it says, in, in addition to other liabilities, Kalel borrowed $2,000 from his sister on Feb 1st, 2009. This is to be paid by June 30th, 2010. Okay. The interest rate was 5% per annum, but neither the loan nor the interest due had been recorded. Okay. So I'm, I'm guessing they mean the interest due at the end of the year. And last item, all other expenses, including water rates and electricity, total 6115 for the year. Now, this caused a bit of trouble, and I'll tell you why when we get to use it. But the first thing they want us to do is to actually prepare a sales total or control account for Kalel's Gardening Center to calculate the total credit sales for the period ended Jan 31st, 2010, for three months. Okay, so it's a simplified debtors control account. We don't have the usual number of details that goes inside of the control account. But what we will start off with are the opening and closing balances. So we have the opening balance of 1475, 
a closing balance of 2300 So debtors is an asset. Assets have debit balances at start. And of course, that's 1475 And the closing balance is the 2300 Now, of course, that's going to be brought down on the debit side. But before you can be brought down on the debit side, you have to be carried down from the credit side like that. Now, we need some more information. Let's go back down to the little um, set of the, the additional information item one. <laughs> okay, so it says all sales were made on credit. Okay, debtors paid 32,006 by check during the year. Okay, so that's receipts from debtors. That's going to go on the credit side of the debtors control account. Why? Because when people pay us, when our debtors pay us back, they reduce the amount of money they owe us. To reduce or decrease an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So that's going to go here. The next item is that the account of one debtor for 75 had been written off as bad. So we've lost that debtor and therefore the debtor's balance has to reduce, which will also be recorded via a credit. Now, clearly, we're missing something. We're missing the credit seals. That's going to go here. So that's the balancing figure in the account. How are we going to find that? Well, we're going to total up this side and that's going to show 34,975. And then we're simply going to subtract this 1475 from that to get the credit sales figure, 33,500. And of course, the total on that side is going to match the total on this side. All right, so that's how you find credit sales. You do up a, a little mini control account and you're good to go. Okay, let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so B part two worth nine marks. Prepare an income statement for Kalel's Gardening Center for the year ended Jan 31st, 2010. Okay, so please head up your statement properly. Kalel's Gardening Center, income statement for the year ended 31st, Jan 2010. The first item is going to be the sales figure we just calculated of 33500 Now we're going to have less cost of goods sold. So now we're going to scroll back up to check out open in stock. Right, so we have the inventory items, 4000 and 5600 respectively. So let's, let's put those in. So we're going to put in the open in stock there. We're going to put in the close in stock there. Now we're going to scroll down to check out the purchases figure. That was given to us as item 2 in the additional information. All purchases totaling 17455 were made on credit. So we're going to put that in here and add it to the opening stock to give us cost of goods available for sale, from which we're going to subtract the closing stock of 5,600 to give us a cost of goods sold of 15,855. Now that's going to give us a gross profit of 17,645 when we subtract it from the 30, from, yeah, from 33,500, sorry. And of course, now we have to minus expenses. So we need to go back up to that other table. Let's go there quickly. Okay, so the first expense I put in was the depreciation. Now you might be asking, but Chris, the additional information notes didn't give us anything about depreciation. Where did you get that from? Well, look at the balances. The property didn't change, but the motor van value at year end, the value went down from 9,000 to 7,000. Now, unless they sold the asset, which they didn't tell us, we have to safely assume that the decrease in the value of the non-current asset was the depreciation. So that's what we're going to put here, right? 9,000 minus 7,000 giving us 2,000. That's the decrease in value. Okay, let's scroll down quickly to check out the other expense. So that actually is the bad debt item of $75. All right, we're going to put that in. And we are going to check out note three. So they're telling us here that Kalel borrowed 2000 from his sister. And the on Feb 1st, 2000, this is from the very start of the year. And the interest rate is 5% per annum. Right, so neither the loan nor the interest has been recorded. Okay, so the interest expenses will simply be 5% of $2,000. That's going to give us $100. Now, item four is telling us that all other expenses, including water rates and electricity, total $6,115 for the year. So when I did this question in my class some, some time ago, because this is from more than a decade ago, a lot of students took that figure of $6,115 and they used that figure in order to get, well, to complete the income statement. Now, the thing is, it's this, how it says here, including water rates and electricity, that led me to thinking that we needed to take into consideration the, the balances, the opening and closing balances that the question provided us in the table above. As a matter of fact, let's scroll up and check out those balances. All right, so we're seeing here prepaid water rates and electricity owing. So one is a prepaid expense, which is an asset. One is an accrued expense, which is a liability. Now, how do we cater for two sets of balances that are both, well, one is a premium, one is an, ex one is an accrual? How do we do that? So we're going to pull up a little expenses T account here, right? So the opening prepayment 
is an asset that's going to go on the debit side. The opening accrual is a liability that's going to go on the credit side. So you're going to see on the debit side, the prepaid balance brought down 400. On the credit side at the start, you're going to see electricity owing or accrual balance brought down sort of 210. Right? Now the closing balances of 500 and 110, right? Of course, that 500 is a prepaid water. It is an asset, a current asset. That's going to be brought down on the debit side. So we're going to put that on the debit side there. And the electricity owing, the closing accrual is also brought down on the credit side because liabilities have credit balances. But before you can be brought down on the debit side, you have to be carried down from the credit side. And before you are brought down on the credit side, you have to be carried down from the debit side. All right. So now what are we missing? We're missing two figures. We're missing the amount paid for expenses and then the balancing figure, which is the income statement figure. Where do we get these things? Let's go back down to the additional information for a second real quick. Right, so back to note four. So that was where the interpretation of this $6,115 figure differed. Some people figured that this was the actual income statement figure. It said all other expenses total $6,115 for the year. But you see that inclusion, this phrase, including these things here, it made me think that, look, this is not the actual amount incurred for expenses. This is the amount paid in respect of expenses. So I use that as the amount to go on the debit side here as the cash book figure, right? Now, if you total up your debit side, you're going to get 66.25 and you're going to add the 210 and 500 to get 710 and you're going to subtract it from the 66.25. That's going to give you the income statement figure. And of course, when you add these three figures, you're going to get 66.25. Now, let's put this 59.15 in the income statement, right? So we're going to put it right there. And I have a little note CT account, so I just we did the T account first. So the expenses are going to total 8,090, and you're going to subtract that from the 17,645 above to give us a 9,555. 9, now, if you want to know what the net profit would be, if you decide, hey, what, I want to use the 6,115 as the other expenses, your net profit will be 9,355, right? So here's what I want you to comment. In the, well, they put a comment in the comment section, comment below, <laughs> and tell me what you think was the correct thing to do. Do you think, because the question said all of their expenses total $61.15 for the year, do you think that that means that the $61.15 was the actual figure to use, the expense incurred figure that was supposed to go here, like that, right? Or do you think that because there was that phrase, including water rates and electricity, that we were supposed to do that T account and, of course, arrive at this figure? Let me hear what you think below. Okay, there's one more part of this question. Let's take a quick look and then call it George. Okay, so B part three is asking us in what classification section of the balance sheet should Kalel recall the loan from his sister? So remember, the loan was taken out on February 1st, 2009 and is to be repaid by June 30th, 2010, which is more than one year from when it was initially taken out. So that's the thing. You see, they didn't tell us any question what date are we considering? Are we to assume that it's 31st Jan 2010 because that's when we did the income statement, right? If that's the case, then yes. If it's a balance sheet as at 31st Jan 2010, it's going to be a current liability because the amount is due for repayment on June 30th or the 30th of June, which is five months after the 31st of Jan, which is less than a year. And if a liability is repayable within less than a year, it's a current liability. However, because they didn't specify, but I think it was implied they meant 31st Jan 2010. If, however, the case could be made that, hey, what, they weren't really specific in the question uh, as to what date we should be using to consider the classification for this loan, you could say, well, hold on, we took the loan out on February 1st, right? So if we did a balance sheet as at Feb 1st, 2009, that loan would be non-current because it will be due June 30th, 2010, which is more than one year from the 1st of Feb, 2009. All right, so again, let me hear in the comment section below what you think was the correct answer. Do you think that because we did an income statement for the 31st of Jan 2010, that the we, we, sh we should have assumed that they were asking about, well, what in what section of the balance sheet would the loan go if we were doing a balance sheet for 31st Jan 2010? Or do you think that they really meant 1st February 2009 when they, when they first took the loan? And let me know why you think um, let me let me know why you are of that opinion. Anyway, guys, that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question three from the May 2010 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. 
if you want to check out any more videos i'm going to put some cards up here don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful payway handles anyway guys as per usual thank you so much for watching take care of yourselves and i'll see you next time bye